Hi everyone, uh, welcome to question answering segment. Today we'll be focusing on ocean forces and energy. We're only going to do topic 1.1, physical quantities and measurement techniques. So we'll be answering some of the exam typical questions. And of course, we'll have to discuss some of the things that you might expect in your exam. Here's another question that is showing a regular shape. Remember the last previous question, we were dealing with the irregular shape. Now there's a regular shape. A student is investigating volume and density. A student has a box as shown in figure 1.1, .1, a balance, a rule, and some dry sand. Figure 1.1 .1 shows the dimensions of the inside of the box. Calculate, calculate the volume of the sand needed to fill the the box so we need to calculate the volume that is required to fill the box so this one is a simple one we simply have to calculate the volume and the formula is length times width times height whereby we are considering this to be our considering this to be our length uh, let's consider this to be our height and this to be our breadth or width therefore the volume is going to be length times width times height in this case length is five centimeters multiplied by width which is four centimeters and the height as well is four centimeters five times four that's 20 20 times four that's 80 cubic centimeters 80 cubic centimeters so there's something else that i want us to vary away of whenever you're given that volume is equals to length times width. Remember, when we're calculating the area of a tri of a rectangle, we know that area is equals to length times times width. Now, if we change the more of a cube, we now consider this to be our height. Now we're saying length times width times height. So length times width there is always area. So you must be aware and must know that this length times width is equivalent to area. Therefore. Another formula can be volume is equals to area times height, which is AH. So you might be asked such a tricky question where you need to use the idea of area. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Student measures the mass of the box when empty and when filled with sand. Quantity? mass of box filled with sand the mass of empty box is 40 then with sand is 216 grams calculate the mass of sand in the box using hair results so we want to calculate the mass of sand in the box so the best way to find the mass of sand in the box we can come here and say mass of sand mass of sand in box is equal to mass of sand itself plus the mass of box so when we have mass of sand plus the mass of the box we get the total mass of the sand and the box now the question is requiring us to find the mass of sand so we are being told that it is the mass of sand in box and box is 216 grams which is equal to the unknown we call it S cent plus the mass of box is said to be 40 grams. Therefore, to determine S, we know that S is equal to 216 minus 40. Therefore, S is equal to 176 grams. That's the mass of cent. That's the mass of cent. Calculate the density of the cent. We've done this before. And we know that density is equal to mass over volume. Now we have determined the mass of the cent, 176. Therefore, 176, which is the mass of cent, divided by volume. Remember, we got the volume of the regular shape when it was 80 cubic centimeters. And if we divide the two, we get 2.2 .2 grams per cubic centimeter. So for part D, 
A miner is a bag containing a mixture of gold, dust, and sand. Gold is a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. He heats the mixer, mixture until the gold melts. Predict whether the sand will float on top of the molten gold. Explain your answer. So the prediction, whether the sand will float on top of the molten gold. Yes, that's very correct. Sand will float. Sand will float. And the reason is it is said that the density of gold is 19 point three grams per cubic centimeter, which means it is more denser compared to sand, which has a density of 2.2. So sand will float because it is less dense compared to, to gold, because they're comparing the two, compared to gold. Okay, there's another question. A student investigates water dripping from a tap. Fig 1.1 shows the dripping tap and a row next to a container collecting the drops of water. Name the quantity that the student is measuring with the row. We can see that the physical quantity that's there is length. And the student is measuring the height of the liquid or height of water. On there, it is very important. Probably we'll discuss it later. On physical, what are physical quantities when we say physical quantities? It's a question that will come that we'll be discussing about the physical quantities. The student uses a digital stopwatch to measure the time between the drops of water. She repeats her measurement. Fig 1.2 shows Fig 1.2 shows the reading of the stopwatch for all game measurements. Okay, so we need to know what's the time there. That's zero, 00 minutes. That's 3 seconds and 10. 3, comma, 1, 0 seconds on this one. Uh, on this one, that's 3, comma, 0, 4. Because we have 0 minutes, 0 seconds. And we have... On this one, it's three comma one comma one six seconds. So on the line below, it's to record the time. So these are the times that have been recorded. Calculate the average time between drops of water. Show your working. So we know that the average time always adds. So we have three point one zero plus three point zero four plus 3.16 we have to divide by 3 and the answer there is 3.1 3 point 1 that's the average time between drops the student collects drops of water for 15 minutes Calculate how many drops leaves the tap in 15.5 minutes. Use your answer to part B2. So we want to calculate the number of drops that we are going to get in a time period of 15.5 minutes. Now, we can only divide time divided by the average time of each drop. We have 15 minutes. And we have to divide by 3.1 seconds, which is the average time. But the best way to make this, we have to convert minutes to seconds as well. So we're going to say 15 minutes multiplied by 60 so that it becomes seconds divided by 3.1. We pass this in the calculator. <laughs> Uh, what do I get there? I get 900 and uh, 930 divided by 
and answer my calculator if it saves me well it's saying 300 300 drops 300 drops so basically that's all we wanted to discuss today on topic 1.1 these are the questions that you are to expect and how you solve it's pretty simple uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see the next video it can pop up on your screen okay fig 1.1 shows a coil of a wire a student measures the length of the coil using a ruler his measurement is 3.8 centimeters there are 20 tens of wire in the coil students uses his measurements to calculate the average thickness of the wire so we want the average thickness of a wire and we want to prove that it is close to 0, 0,2 centimeters so what do we do we know that thickness of a single wire thickness of a single wire is equals to total thickness total thickness of the coil divided by number of turns of coil or number of coils right so what is the total number of what is the total thickness it was said to be 3,8 centimeters then we divide by the number of coils which is 20 coils if we divide those the answer is 0, 0,19 centimeters which is very close to 0, 0,2 centimeters if we round it off to one decimal place we'll get 0, 0,2 centimeters now the student measurement 3.8 eight centimeters is inaccurate suggest so one reason why the measurement is inaccurate so let me suggest one we can talk of parallax error parallax error this has to do with the wrong line of sight remember whenever we are taking a reading must always be directly or perpendicular to the point we are taking the reading we must not be at a certain angle that is not 90 degrees otherwise we have a parallax error we could talk about zero error zero error this has to do with the machine it's a fixed error remember parallax error is a random error it's not a fixed error but zero error is a fixed error it is something to do with the machine that is or the measuring tool that we'll be using now let's go to part b the volume of the wire in the coil is 16.6 centimeters and its mass is 148 grams calculate the density of the metal used for the wire in the coil so we know that density is equals to mass over volume so if density is equal to mass over volume we have the mass here in grams which is 148 there's no need to convert these grams to kgs because our answer is required in grams per cubic centimeters so we say 148 divided by 16.6 which is the volume we punch this in the calculator i get uh, 8.9 so if 8.9 cubic grams per cubic centimeter okay part c student is a measuring cylinder and a beaker of water as shown in the figure 1.2 as you can see there i have a beaker of water but a measuring cylinder and a coil so we want to measure the describe how the student can determine the volume of the coil by using equipment shown in fig 1.2 so the best way to measure this uh, it's more of an irregular shape so the best way to measure is uh, we pour some water into the measuring cylinder maybe to a certain uh, height then we record the initial volume of water after that we then place our coil into the measuring cylinder and then we record the final volume then after finding the final volume we subtract the two and get the volume of the coil so if i may put it down uh i'll just say this thing half fill the cylinder with water uh -huh and check initial check initial reading 
let's call this initial reading uh, vi which is the initial initial reading and the next thing i want us to immense or let me say let's immense the coil in the measuring the measuring cylinder remember we have to use the string we'll be using the the string and record final final volume let's call it vf then subtract final volume which is vf from initial volume which is v i to find the volume of the coil so after getting that then this will give us the volume of the coil so it's basically subtracting the volume of the initial then we subtract the volume after we have added to, after we have submerged the coil so remember this is method usually that we use for irregular shapes or irregular irregular shapes but if it is a regular shape we can use depending uh, on the on the shape we can use some formulas to calculate but whenever you are given an irregular shape and you are asked to find the volume this is the best method that we can use to determine the volume which is basically called the displacement method displace displace displacement method okay 